our kit into a powerful motorized remote car kit. You'll need this module, a transmitter and receiver. Look closely at this. It has symbols for forward, backward, and left right. We'll connect our motor to these. V minus and V plus are for the battery. I've used a two amp dual motor driver, which is a 298N. This can easily run heavy motors up to two amps. Look carefully at the connections. It has options for 12 volts, five volts, and two motors can be connected from both sides. I've made this switch, which I'll connect to the battery using a two pin connector. It's very easy. You can make it by putting it in series. I'll desolder all the wires from the receiver, which are for the motor, one by one, then take them out. And here, I'll use a four pin connector, which I need to connect to the 298N, as I mentioned earlier. I'll attach the wires from this connector in place of the four motor wires. Remember, connect the pins in series, one by one, and don't mix up the wires. I'm showing you how to connect one wire. Connect the rest in the same way. I've sped up the video a bit so it doesn't get boring. See how neat it looks after connecting the four pin connector? You can clearly identify backward, forward, and left, right. We need to connect this four pin connector to the inputs on our motor driver. To power it, I only need one lithium ion battery, but I'm thinking of soldering it properly. So I've cleaned the terminals on top, heated them with my soldering iron, and connected the plus minus wires from the two pin connector. I've desoldered the plus minus wires from the module and connected the two pin connector from our switch to it. See, it should look like this. Let's plug it into our switch module. Now it's time for the transmitter. I've also added a battery switch to it so it stays on all the time. Its range isn't great, but it still works up to 10 to 15 meters. I thought, why not mount it on a foam board? So I measured, cut it out, and now I'm going to fit it on there. I've carefully glued each component with my glue gun. See how it looks now? All right, let's attach the receiver board in the same way. Just keep applying the glue. Glue, glue, glue. Hmm? To dry it, we've made a hand fan to blow air on the glue. Make sure to tighten the antenna properly for a good connection. There you go. Your receiver circuit is ready. Let's first test the transmitter and receiver with a multimeter to check if each pin has a voltage close to 4 volts. I mentioned that the 298N needs a 5 volt supply, so we've used a 7805 regulator IC. As per the IC's pin configuration, I've used a heavy battery to run the 2 amp motors added the voltage regulator and connected the motor wires. I properly connected all. Let's connect the batteries plus terminal. It's a heavy voltage and I'm a bit nervous, but we must proceed with our final test. After making everything, I thought, why not add a lithium ion battery charger? So I took apart two modules, the transmitter and receiver, and now I'm connecting them. Here, I've properly soldered the red wire for positive. I've connected the black wire for negative. Then checked to ensure it's properly placed. And directly soldered the plus and minus onto the lithium ion battery module. All right, let's test it. I've attached a USB type C charging pin to the module and yes, it's charging properly. I'm thinking of improving the transmitter by adding a joystick. So I've opened up my SBDT and DPDT switch. And I'll solder the wires one by one, then explain how to connect it. In this switch, the middle pin is common and the side pins are normally open. When we press the switch, 
They connect to the middle pin, which is the common point. Let's first check the switch with a multimeter's continuity test. I'll press all the switches one by one and touch the side pins to the common wire to check continuity. This way, we'll see if everything is working correctly when we press the buttons. Once everything is working fine, I'll fix it in my box. What you're seeing is the common point of the transmitter. And on this, we need to solder the middle terminal of our switch, which is the common terminal. Then, on the other two spots, solder the side switch buttons that connect when pressed. Since the transmitter has two pairs of switches, we need to create pairs of three for each side. You connect can. one pair to one SPDT can. and the other pair to the other yes. SPDT. Watch the video yes. carefully to yes. understand the connections properly. Once your connections are proper, you need to secure your transmitter read inside the transmitter box. It took me quite some effort and hours to do it, but you can speed up the process. Similarly, I used paper foam or foam board for the receiver. I cut, shaped, and structured it properly to fit the receiver securely. To see how I did it, watch the video carefully. Or you can also use your own creativity to make it. Just put your mind to it and build. This way, you can build a heavy-duty transmitter and receiver that can easily run two amp motors. Your toy car transmitter and receiver can now be used with heavy motors. You can apply this module to any device. It's time for testing. I'll carefully connect the plus and minus terminals of the heavy battery, and then press both buttons simultaneously to move both motors forward. When I press the other two buttons together, they move in reverse. This shows that our transmitter and receiver are working correctly. The motors may appear to be moving in parallel, but that's not the case. When connected to a robot, they'll move as expected. If you enjoyed our video, please like and share.